Hello my quilting friends, my name is Leah Day and welcome to this video all about changing the treadle belt on your vintage sewing machine. So a few things that you're going to need to get started, you're going to need a new treadle belt and you want to take a look at it, there's going to be a metal clip on one end, take note of how thick that piece of metal is and try and find a nail in your house that's about the same thickness, maybe a little bit thicker. You're also going to need a block of wood a hammer, and some pliers. I have a regular set of jeweler's pliers and some needle nose pliers. Now there is a specialty plier that you can get that will cut the hole in your treadle belt and close the clip for you. I'm sure it's gonna be easier to use if you get that specialty device. However, it's kind of a unitasker and I only have two treadles so I don't really need that. I just simply use these regular pliers, what I've got around the house, and that works just fine. So let's pull out this treadle belt and get started attaching it to this machine. Another thing that's really helpful to have is some sort of clip, maybe some clothespins, and that's gonna keep your belt from slipping down as you put it on your machine. So here we go. I'm gonna place this just like so, and this is the end with the clip. And I'm gonna place that clip there so that way it doesn't slip and feed the plain end of this treadle belt through the back. So this is a beautiful treadle that has all of the guides still attached. So I'm gonna go through this back guide. It's like a loop of metal back here, feeding the belt down and then around the wheel. Kind of bring it through there. Watch out for all the things you can get hooked to. There we go. And watch out, this was a mistake I made the first time I changed out a treadle belt. It wasn't fully seated on the wheel and then I accidentally cut it and I didn't realize it wasn't seated nicely and then it ended up being way too short. First time I ever did this, I cut three belts too short. So yeah, definitely let me know how challenging it was. All right, so that is pulled through and I'm gonna tug on the top, kind of wheel that back and forth and then send it up through my hole to the top of the machine. There we go. Whoop, but you see it slipped off. So let's see if we can get it back on here easily. I'm gonna place a clip up here so that way it doesn't slip from the top as I feed this around. So as you can see, it's really easy for that to slip. Just keep an eye on it. I'm gonna put more tension on this and that will hopefully keep it in place. There we go. And you want it to be nicely spinning, just like that. So here's what the treadle belt looks like at the top. Uh, and I placed these clips and tightened them up. So this is under tension now. And uh, that is keeping the belt wrapped tightly around the wheel below. Another thing to really look for is the groove that the belt is supposed to go in around the hand wheel of your machine. I realized that I had my belt up in this area and that was incorrect. I need to make sure that's going around the belt guide. That's usually a little further down and a little bit of a deeper groove. So pay very close attention to that. Make sure you've got your belt in the right location, both above on the machine and below on the treadle wheel. Okay. So I place my clips so that way, even if I let go of this, it's not gonna fly down <laughs> into the base, which is very frustrating. Uh, now, you don't want to just go crazy tight on this. It's not necessary. Uh, and please understand that the belt is going to stretch. It is made out of leather and you possibly will have to adjust this periodically. So it's, you know, you don't wanna go crazy tight that can damage your machine. So I'm going here, just bringing it together, making sure that these two ends of the belts are nicely parallel. I've got my clip right here, and I'm just going to mark a line right here where the ends will butt up. Now I'm also kind of visualizing, you can see how this hook uh, is going through the leather and it emerged in a hole that distance about a quarter inch away from the end. So I'm gonna kind of guesstimate the same spot and mark a dot about a quarter inch from that 
mark. That mark is my cut line. That dot is going to be my punch hole where I'm going to punch a hole for this clip to go in. Okay, so I've got that marked. And I'll be honest, this was the part that I really struggled with the most. And uh, it took me a while to realize that the easiest way to do it is just simply let this be slack, like let this go on ahead and flow over and give yourself plenty of slack. Yes, you're gonna have to completely get the belt back in the right location, upper and lower, but it's so much easier to be able to pull the belt out of this little narrow niche area and get it over in a place where you can actually support it on your block of wood. So let's move it over and get this cut and get that nail hole made. So I'm just lining up the nail with that hole and I'm gonna tap it through. And then pull it out and kind of visualize the opposite side of that. It looks like it didn't go all the way through. So I really do want it to go all the way through. Give it a good pound. You can start to see where it's coming through and you wanna make sure that's roughly in the middle of that belt. You don't want it coming through at an angle. You really want it nicely in the middle. So that way it's, the clip is gonna go straight through it. There we go, I know I'm through now. I can grab those pliers, that'll help me take this back out again. Okay, so I had a pretty giant hole on this end, and it's a little bit bigger than I actually need. Probably should have searched around for a slightly smaller nail, but this is what I got on hand and this is gonna work. So I drive it through the other end too, just to make sure it goes all the way through. Pull this back out. There we go, we are good to go. And I am not going to cut this end off yet. I wanna get that clip placed. I wanna make sure and kind of test fire it and make sure it's going to roll around nicely and it fits nicely. Uh, and once I cut it, it's done. You know, if I cut it too short and I made that mistake, like I said so many times, then it's a done deal. But if I leave that length, eh, I can still adjust it. I can put a lot of holes in it, but I can only cut it once. So let's get it back in place and then test our fit. So I got everything back in position, double checking it below, rolling it back and forth, making sure that that belt is perfectly seated in the wheel and then going up and around the machine in the right location here too. This looks great. And then now I'm gonna take that clip and send it through the hole, just like so and then close it. Now I have found that, you know, just a minor adjustment of how you close this clip can also change things. So if you feel like things, it's not working, maybe it's slipping a little bit, you know, you can trim away a little excess of the, of the belt. You can tighten up this clip to bring those ends of the metal just a little bit closer together but that looks good. Okay, now I can remove these since it's locked together, it's not gonna slip down. And I can just wheel that back and forth and just see, you know, is that going to actually move the flywheel or is it slipping a little bit? I can tell that is slipping a little bit. This is where it gets a little nuancy as far as kind of fiddling with it and getting it exactly in the right location. Now, I think this is very, very close. I think a large part of it will be um, just simply clipping off this excess and uh, bringing the ends of this clip much closer together, maybe even overlapping them. So I feel like it's only just based off of, you know, this is slipping just very, very lightly. I'm moving the foot pedal here and it's mostly moving the belt. You know, it's, it's kind of catching against whenever I, this, this thick end can't go through that hole, obviously. But for the most part, it is running it. So I think that this is good. You know it's way too long when it won't even run the machine. Like the machine, if you rotate the hand wheel, then it won't roll the, uh, the wheel. And it won't, if you run the pedal, uh, then it won't run the machine, vice versa. Okay, there we go. Clip that off and get that back in position. And like I said, I just feel like if I tighten this up, it's gonna be just about perfect. But this is fiddly and hard because as you can see, this is under tension and it's on the machine and it's in a weird location. So I'm gonna try and bring this closer together. 
I will oftentimes spend like 30 minutes just playing with the clip. Like I said, there is that specialty tool. You can absolutely invest in that if you're gonna do this a lot. Um, but I think just being willing to fiddle with this and really take your time on it. And then accept also that it might not end up being 100% perfect, but it might be just good enough. I really grip that and bring it in. Sorry, I feel like these jewelers clips are, the um, pliers are good, but they're a little bit too small. Um, they just need to be like, I need a little bit more opening here. So maybe look at electrician pliers instead. When in doubt, get a bigger pair of pliers. <laughs> get a bigger tool. This is giving me a lot more control. These are channel grips and I can really clamp down on those. I have so much more control over that. And it's really tightening it up. I think that looks good. But really, the ultimate test, that's, that's just a little bit, they're just a little bit far apart. I wish I could bring that in closer. I probably shouldn't have cut that belt quite so low, but let's just test it. So I'm wheeling the machine. And so far so good, it's not slipping. That looks pretty good to me. So even if it's not absolutely perfect, it can still work a-okay. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about changing a treadle belt with me. Now, my belt is still ever so slightly slippy, but I don't have really any more adjustment in the belt unless I wanted to drive another nail in it uh, and move the clip, which would be kind of an ordeal. So a couple ideas for increasing the catching of the belt, like if let's say it starts slipping, maybe the belt stretches a little bit and it really starts slipping a lot. What I can do is take one of those wide rubber bands that you get on broccoli, you know, vegetables and stuff. I could take that and put that around the area where the belt goes. And that will add just a little bit more grip to that area and the belt won't, and it'll also make it a little bit fatter and then the belt will grip just a little bit better. Uh, so definitely some things that you can do that don't involve actually cutting the belt or getting a new belt uh, or having to really fiddle with that too much. As you can see, this is a process and I'll be honest, every single belt that I put on my treadles, it's been a little bit of a learning curve, every single one of them. Um, it's just a process. You just need to be patient with it, really get the feel of it. And you know, kind of, you gotta get it on there and just pedal with it and maybe stitch a couple of quilt blocks and then see how that works. And then if it needs adjustment, and make an adjustment. It's really not that big of a deal. But I would say if you're changing a treadle belt for the very first time, maybe buy two instead of just one, just in case you cut it wrong and you don't have to order a whole nother one. And then you've got a backup in reserve. So that's just an idea, my handy tip. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like, a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more treadling videos as I play with my Singer 15 clone on this very heavily modified treadle cabinet. There's a whole story behind this and I had lots of fun putting it together. This was originally a Singer 12 machine in this cabinet. Uh, now changing the base, it is pretty much all kind of kludged together, but it's working wonderfully. And I absolutely love treadle sewing. It's so much fun, it's so relaxing. Best of all, I can do it when the power isn't working. So that makes it completely awesome. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you'd like more videos and until next time, Let's go treadle.